a very happy evening to one and all present here. I am uh, very much thankful to the Tripur branch of ICAA for giving me this August, uh, for giving me an opportunity. So let's begin with a quote, uh, like learn, unlearn and relearn. That is very much applicable to our um, uh, CS and mainly to direct us, direct us because every year there is an amendment, every year we have to learn and unlearn something and relearn something, something new or we have to keep ourselves updated. So today we will be seeing about uh, the uh, direct tax amendments which are applicable to assessment year 22-23, which means Finance Act 2021. Okay, so this, this is the overview of the session. So we have amendments in all these topics, PGBP, capital gain, deduction, exemption, assessment, trust, TDS, and other miscellaneous amendments. So we'll start with PGBP. So first, um, Amendment relating to PGBP, uh, first in uh, section 44AB. This, uh, this was uh, somewhat criticized all over uh, by everyone that uh, everyone are increasing the tax audit limit. Government is not interested in uh, CAs. So they want to reduce uh, CAs. Uh, they want to reduce, uh, the, uh, they are taking away all the opportunities of CA. Uh, they have uh, some of criticism were there in this, uh, for this amendment. So they have increased the threshold limit from one crore to 10 crore. But they have given a provision like uh, cash receipts uh, should not exceed 5% of the total receipt. And the same way, cash payment also should not exceed 5% of the total payment. If both these conditions are satisfied, then up to 10 crore rupees tax, uh, tax audit need not be conducted. So in the previous year, it was 1 crore rupees this, with the same condition. Now they have amended and uh, they have increased the threshold to 10 crores. One more thing in this is any check drawn or bank draft other than account payee will be considered as a cash payment. They have provided an explanation for it. So uh, if we are anything other than account payee check or a bank draft will be considered as cash. So that will also be included in this uh, cash res uh, in this restriction limit. We have to check that also. So second amendment is in section 44 ADA. So the words used in section 44 ADA was uh, any assessee being a resident engaged in profession. Now they have uh, changed the words from any assessee to any assess assessee being an individual partnership uh, other than LLP, which means they are clearly specifying LLP and HUF. They cannot add up for this uh, 44 ADA. So uh, this, uh, this amendment is applicable from assessment year 21 22 itself. That is the previous year itself, which is applicable. So LLP and HUF, uh, the, uh, these are few small, small provisions where they just uh, clarify the things like you should, uh, and they are bringing more clarity uh, how they, it should be. So LLP and HUF cannot go for presumptive taxation under 44 ADA. Next, uh, goodwill is not a depre uh, depreciable asset now. Uh, earlier, we used, to, uh, we used to claim depreciation uh, for goodwill. Now, from uh, in section 32, block of asset definition, they have removed uh, goodwill, which means we cannot claim depreciation on goodwill. This is also applicable from assessment year 21-22 itself. So what will happen to the goodwill which we have claimed till now? So what is the cost of acquisition of that goodwill minus the depreciation which we have claimed till now will be reduced from the block. Now, what if uh, the intangible asset block is more than this amount, uh, sorry, less than this amount, say, now we have to, because of this goodwill adjustment, we have to uh, reverse, the, we have to reduce from the block 25. And if the block itself is 15, then uh, deemed the capital gain provisions of section 15 will be applicable. But government did not retrospect, uh, did not change the section 50 here in uh, Finance Act 2021. But uh, in Finance Act 2022, now in this budget, they have uh, given the uh, adjustment for 50, uh, in section 50B, uh, clarifying that short, uh, deemed short-term capital gain will be applicable. Next, section 36, 1, 5A and 43B. This is a common one. Uh, everyone faced this issue, employee contribution to ESI and PF. Uh, there were judgments like uh, saying even employee contributions uh, can be uh, can be paid till the uh, within the due date of filing of return, like in 43B. 
but in 43b it was clearly given employer contribution but there were judgments uh, uh, stating this way and that way so in order to provide some clarification in that government clearly states employee contribution to esi and pf should be deposited within the respective due date that is 15th of the next month as per uh, 36 15a so 43b will not be applicable here that is becoming even more clear next 115 jb mat uh, this is this will not be much applicable to us so dividend received by a foreign company on its investment in india uh, shall be excluded from calculation of uh, book profit uh, where such income is taxed lower than mat uh, due to dtaa if the rate is lower then that will not be included in book profit so foreign company this pro, uh, this will not be much effective for us important adjustments for pgdp will be uh, uh, only these four adjustments in P, uh, amendments in pgdp next coming to capital gain okay section 43 ca and 562x so a difference between the sale consideration and stamp duty value is uh, should be generally 5 percentage uh, but only for this uh, government has been uh, bring an amendment for uh, up to 20 percentage there can be a difference this is only for uh, transfer of residential unit between uh, this so and so date 12th november 2020 to 30th june 2021 and there are few other conditions also the transfer is by way of first time allotment so like the he should be the first uh, he is getting uh, first time uh, a house property then consideration received or accrued does not exceed 2 crore rupees and this is also a condition so if all this satisfies then the uh, stamp duty value and the sale consideration difference can be up to 20 percentage one more uh, adjust uh, amendment is 54 gb so 54 GB, we, uh, the deduction was uh, if you uh, if uh, if you are um, get the same consideration my, uh, if the capital gain is invested in a company and the company invests the same in a plant and machinery of a startup, then they were giving deduction for 54 GB. Now the outer date of transfer of residential property was extended till 31st March 2022. This is just a date adjustment, so they have extended for one more year, 54 GB. Next, uh, as I have said, uh, for uh, section 50 B, slum sale. This is one uh, important adjustment, and uh, we have to know why this adjustment came also. There were two cases like the Honorable Madras High Court in case of Avira T and D Limited, Mr. CAT and uh, CAT Bharat Bijli. So in these cases, what happened was uh, there was a, a slum sale, but it was not uh, by sale. It was an exchange, like they gave you debentures instead of the, con the consideration was, was through debentures. So the court said it is an exchange and uh, sale and exchange is not same. And the section 50B uses the word sale. So this will, you cannot use uh, 50B direct, 50 direction. So now the government has come out with an explanation stating uh, they removed this word sale and they have included all transfers which are whichever uh, as per section 247 whatever the transfers are there all those will be applicable now so uh, in the they have also given an um, adjustment stating uh, sorry explanation stating value of self-generated goodwill is nil then this adjustment is also uh, amendment is also retrospectively applicable from 1 for 2020 itself and also uh, for slum sale, uh, they, in 50B, only for cost of acquisition, they were given, uh, giving us uh, how, the method how to calculate uh, cost of acquisition. Now, uh, in Financial 2021, they have come out with, the, uh, with uh, how, to, how you should calculate the value of consideration also. Like they have given both, uh, now we have uh, both sale value, uh, how to calculate sale value and how to calculate cost of acquisition. Both we have now. So how do you calculate uh, sale value? For that, we have rule 11 UAE. What Raman U, uh, 11 UAE states is, yeah, from the like fair market value one or fair market value two, whichever is higher. So we have to calculate in two methods and whatever, whichever value is higher, that will be taken as fair market value. That will be taken as sale consideration. So first FMV one is, a plus, and this, uh, this is given in the act itself, A plus B plus C plus D minus L. So what they are meaning is, 
A is the book value of all assets. That is okay. So except jewelry, shares, securities, and immovable immovable property. That each one they are giving in separately. How you should value? B jewelry you should get a valuation from the valuer. Then if it is shares, whatever if it is listed the rate in the stock exchange. If it is unlisted, then you have to go with the uh, rule eleven U A. So whatever states, uh, however calculation you have, it is stated in eleven U A. In that way we have to calculate the value of shares. Then important one is D stamp duty value of immovable property. So till now generally the book value of assets only were taken. So stamp duty value and book value will have a huge difference. Now they are asking you to include the stamp duty value of immovable property as uh, fair market value. And uh, L is book value of liabilities. This is one method of calculation. The second one is F M V two. That is E plus F plus G plus H. So what they are coming to say is, uh, E is value of monetary consideration received. Like what is the amount? Uh, like uh, yes, a fixed amount of say fifty lakhs or some whatever the monetary consideration. Then F will be the F M V of non-monetary consideration. Uh, if if the property is covered under Rule Eleven U A, then go with Eleven Eleven U A. If the property is not at all in Eleven U A. Then you calculate the market value based on open market. That is G. So if uh, if uh, whatever thing you are going to sell, that is there in eleven U A. Go with uh, the valuation in eleven U A. If it is not there, go with open market value. Then H is same uh, in both F M V one and two. Stamp duty value of immovable property. So uh, whichever value comes higher, that will be taken as the sale consideration. But one thing to note here is uh, the basic slum sale definition is taking an undertaking, like takeover of an undertaking, without assigning value to each asset. But now this definition itself is getting changed. They are assigning value to each one. So basic meaning of slum sale is not at all uh, given. Uh, so, uh, but uh, with this, the uh, government will be getting more tax because uh, value of uh, fair market value will be increasing. So, uh, but uh, this uh, transfer, include, expanding the scope of transfer, that is one good thing because uh, a lot more cases will be covered through this. This is one important adjustment regarding fifty B. Next, one more uh, important uh, amendment: forty five four and nine B. Reconstruction of specified entity. So firm, AOB, BOI, anything. Uh, by reconstruction, what they mean is admission, retirement, death, or any change in uh, with regard to firm admission, uh, partnership fund, or any change in uh, share, uh, share profit sharing ratio. All four: admission, death, retirement, or uh, change in uh, profit sharing ratio. All this will be considered in the term reconstruction. Now they have introduced to two nine B is a new section. And forty-five four is an old one, which they have amended totally. They have amended. Both are charging the same thing, but there is a slight difference over the two. So nine in nine uh, day will be applicable for reconstruction and or dissolution, but forty-five four is applicable only for reconstruction. Basically, what they are trying to do is in nine B, whatever the firm gains on transfer. This is uh, basically when a partner. Trans uh, when a partner is getting a capital asset or a stock in trade or uh, money on reconstruction or dissolution, these two sections will be attracting. So, uh, if there is a change in partnership and the existing partner uh, takes over some of the capital goods or whatever, then these two sections will be attracting. So, in nine B, the difference uh, the partner's takeover of goods will be considered as a transfer. So whatever the gain on transfer for the firm will be uh, will be taxed in nine B. In the same way, whatever gain partners whatever the partner gains on this transfer will be taxed, but on firm's hand. Uh, like uh, if while uh, in the next slide we have an example with numbers, so we will see that. So basically, the exam uh, difference here is. Nine uh, B is applicable for recon uh, reconstruction or dissolution. Both is there, but in forty five forty five four only reconstruction is there. Same way, capital goods or stock in trade, both will be there. In, uh, both 
uh, on both things 90 gets attracted but uh, stock in if it is a stock in trade like um, a partner takes over a stock in trade in that case only 9b gets attracted and 454 will not be attracted suppose it is a capital goods then we have to pay tax on both 9b and 454 both sections we have to pay tax so uh, 9b just creates a charge like it is taxable but the taxability will be based on the provisions of either capital capital gain or pgdp whatever it is based on that but 454 is a section under capital gain so uh, whatever provision in capital gain that will be applicable so let's see an example basic uh, basically this is the uh, amendment so if uh, suppose let us take an example we are admitting a new partner now on admission there is none of the partner is taking away any asset money or stock interest in that case there is no tax implication in this 45.4 or 9b. Only when they take over some asset, money or stock interest, this will be applicable. If they take over a capital asset, then tax as per 9b, 45.4, both will be applicable. If money is taken over, then 45.4 alone will be applicable. If stock in trade is taken over, then 9b alone will be applicable. Let's take an example. So, in this partnership firm, uh, there are two partners, A, B, existing, uh, there uh, they, uh, we have four assets. So, E is going to be taken over by Mr. A, the ca capital asset. So, capital asset F is going to be taken over by B. In that case, uh, on uh, reconstruction, the values will be revalued, right? So, revalued value is also given here. In this case, now, uh, if we take taxation based on 9 B, how will be taxed is? Full value of consideration, that is the fair market value. Uh, what we saw is 200 is the fair market value. Then yeah, 9B only creates a charge. So capital gain, uh, so it just says, if it is a capital good taken over by a partner, then it will be taxed. So taxed based on the pro uh, provisions of capital gain. So uh, in that case, you can claim indexation benefit. So index to cost, we are assuming it is as a 75. The capital gain, uh, 125 will be taxed, 25 rupee, uh, uh, 20 percentage, this is normal, whatever capital gain, 20 percentage, then then uh, this is okay, this is, uh, this is the difference, this is the firm's gain on this transfer, like the value of the capital asset was 200, the cost was less, so this is what the firm gains on this transfer. In the same way, if uh, whatever partners gains on this transfer more than their capital, uh, capital that will be taxed under 45.4. See? See, in 45.4, what is the uh, how they calculate taxes? Capital gain equal to money received, fair market value of capital asset minus the capital balance in book. So, uh, if we are taking over an asset more than the capital balance which is available in your book, then only the section will be applicable. Say our capital balance is only 100 and we are taking over an asset with fair market value 50, then 45.4 will not be applicable. Only if it is more than that, 45.4 will be applicable and we have to take without revaluation effect. So in this case, taking this example, so capital balance without revaluation effect is only 100, but we are going to take over an asset value 200. So that 100 rupees, is actually partner's gain, but it will be taxed in the hands of the firm. So firm has to pay tax for two things. One, the gain of the firm. Another one, gain of uh, gain of the partners, which is taxed in firm. So gain of partners, which is taxed in firm is 45.4. Then firm's profit is 9B. This is one uh, important adjustment. So... This is the same uh, taxation under 45.4, 200 minus without revaluation re value. So 100, 100 rupees will be your uh, tax value. You have to ca calculate capital gain for 100. Next, next proceeding to deductions. So very few um, amendments related to deductions. Uh, only uh, date is getting extended, that's all. So 80 IAB. Uh, it is a uh, deduction given on uh, developing and building housing projects. 100% of the profit were given as deduction. One, uh, but the date of incorporation was uh, up to 1421. Now it is extended for one more year, up to 1422. You can claim deduction in this section. 
Similarly, ATEEA, it was a deduction, it was an additional deduction for interest on housing loan. 150,000 was given as a deduction only for first home buyers. But the stamp duty value should be only up to 50 lakhs. So now the period of loan sanction is still is extended up to 31st March 22 to claim deduction in this section. One more section is ATIAC. In this deduction in respect of profits of eligible startups. So whatever eligible startups, they could get deduction in this section. Similarly, the outer date of incorporation is extended to 1st April 2022. Next, coming to exemptions. 1010D, that is ULIPS. Uh, ULIPS and mutual funds are almost uh, were almost similar, but ULIPS taxation and mutual fund taxation was entirely different. So many mutual fund associations were long term, they were asking the government to make, make both ULIP and uh, mutual fund at par. Because in ULIP, if you invest, it is tax free, uh, the value is also tax free, and realization is also tax free. All the way it was tax free, but mutual fund uh, capital gain attracted in uh, one one uh, triple one A and uh, one one two A. So they were asking for a at par uh, decision. So government has come out with an um, at, uh, amendment in ten ten D. So ten ten D uh, prior to prior to this amendment, all ULIP uh, all ULIP gains were exempted. Now after one two twenty one. Whatever ULIP uh, policy you have, if the premium amount is more than 250,000 per annum. So if the policy or uh, premium amount is more than 250,000 per annum, then that ULIP will not be eligible for this 1010D. In that case, that ULIP will be considered as a capital asset. So if it is a capital asset, then uh, at par with mutual fund, it will be treated as an equity oriented fund and uh, uh, taxation under 112A and 112B, uh, sorry, 112, 111A and 112A will be attracted short term or long term on the basis of it. So, 1221, after that, any ULIP policy with premium to more than 250,000 per annum will not be eligible for deduction uh, exemption under 1010D. So, it will be treated at par with mutual funds. It will be, uh, it will be treated as equity oriented funds. Next, leave travel concession. Since because of COVID, uh, no employee could have gone for any travel to get leave travel concession. So any cash given in lieu of uh, leave, uh, leave travel concession will also be exempted. But this is only uh, for, uh, subject to certain conditions. But this is applicable only for this current year. Any next year, it will not be applicable. Because of COVID situation, they gave an exemption for uh, leave travel concession. Next is, PF interest. Uh, similar to ULIP, PF interest also on uh, investment, PF was tax free, like you got deduction under ATC, interest was also exempted, and uh, if you withdraw, that is also exempted. All was exempted. Now there is a cap on PF interest also. Now, uh, if the contribution is more than 250,000 per annum, if uh, then more than that, whatever uh, in that contribution, whatever interest you are earning, that will be taxed. So, if uh, contribution is more than 250,000 per annum, the interest on that excess contribution will be taxed. Uh, up to this, uh, this is applicable only from 1421. So, whatever balance we have as on 31321, that value, uh, even though if it is more than 250,000, value, interest, everything is tax free. Only after 1421, whatever contribution we are paying, if it is more than 250,000, um, the more uh, whatever value in excess of 250, that alone, in that interest alone, will be taxed. In the same way, if it is uh, government employees, they, uh, they will be paying for a general provident fund. In, the, uh, be, uh, in that case, employer will not contribute to that fund. For them, up to 5 lakhs it is exempted. If it is more than 5 lakhs, same way. Uh, any contribution more than 5 lakh interest earn on it will be taxed. So this is the uh, amendment related to exemptions. Now next coming to trust. Two, two, adjustment, two amendments relating to trust. One is 1023C. 
सब क्लास थ्री ए डी वॉज एक्सम्शन ऑफ इनकम ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन इफ दि अग्रिकेट रिसीव डस नॉट एक्सी वन क्रोर अर्लियर now they have extended the amount to 5 crores so if any universities or educational institution if their aggregate receipt is up to 5 crores then the uh, then the, it will be fully exempted under 1023c similarly uh, sub class 3a e was relating to hospitals so aggregate if the aggregate receipt of the hospital was 1 crore uh, prior amendment it was 1 crore now it is 5 crores they have extended the base for both educational universities and uh, hospitals one more, one clarification here is suppose a person has both this hospital and university in that case no, 10 crore 10 crore exemption will not be given together all the receipts for 5 crore only this exemption will be applicable then coming to section 11 and 1023c corpus donation uh, they have provided an explanation stating corpus donation should also be in 115 mode earlier uh, they did not specifically mean corpus donation should be in 115 mode now they have provided an uh, explanation stating corpus donation should not should also be in 115 mode should also be invested in 115 mode similarly the amount spent from this corpus donation will not be taken as an application so uh, ma mandatory 85% application is there no in the corpus donation uh, the amount spent from this corpus donation will not be considered for this ma uh, 85% uh, mandatory application then uh, if we are borrowing money as a, uh, if you are getting a loan and with that you are going to apply something that amount that will not be considered as an application any utilization of borrowed money will not be considered as an application but if the uh, loan is uh, repaid in that case the amount of repayment will be considered as applied so uh, if you are getting an amount uh, if we are borrowing a loan we are going to apply it in something uh, say we are going to buy some goods or uh, anyway we are going to apply that on that time that amount will not be allowed as application uh, when you are repaying that loan that amount of repayment will be allowed as an application uh, one more clarification given is excess application of previous year suppose say uh, last uh, few years we have excess uh, application in that case that cannot be set off with the uh, amount uh, which requires to be applied here say uh, he, in this year we have uh, income uh, we have to apply uh, we have to apply uh, we should apply 85% of the income right so excess application of the previous year cannot uh, cannot set off here you cannot say last year we have ex, uh, we have uh, excess uh, we have uh, applied a lot of money can we adjust it with this current year since we have income that we cannot do so excess application of the previous years cannot be adjusted with this uh, income of current year this is relating to trust so they one they have increased the uh, uh, aggregate uh, threshold from 1 crore to 5 crore then uh, one uh, important amendment is uh, amount of loan borrowed uh, that application cannot be treated as an application uh, that amount of application from borrowed money will not be con considered as a application Sim uh, but when you repay the loan that amount of repayment you can consider it as an application similarly excess application of previous year you cannot adjust with current year income next coming to tds and tcs this we all know because tds of uh, this year we started uh, uh, implementing it for all the quarters so 194q 194q and 2061h was uh, the interplay between the two section 2 not uh, tds on purchase and that was on tds on sales so uh, basically first 194q and uh, the rate of tax is 0.1% if uh, per, uh, if if the assessee has a turnover of more than 10 crores in the previous year then for any purchase more than 50 lakhs in the current year he should deduct uh, tds in under section 194q suppose uh, if the same amount is uh, if we are going to deduct in some other section like some other section also gets attracted in that case 194q need not be paid except 2061h so uh, in uh, so which means uh, more than to uh, 194q dominates 2061h even though 2 not uh, tcs so 2061h is tcs on uh, sale of goods 
same same provision there also if a, uh, if an assessee has a turnover of more than 10 crore in the previous year then for any sale of more than 50 lakhs for a per, for a single per party then he should deduct tds of uh, 0.1 percentage so and now like if we take an example of if the seller has a turnover of um, 10 crore buyer has a turnover of 5 crore in that case the liability is on the seller if the seller's turnover is 5 crore buyer's turnover is 10 crore then the liability is on the uh, buyer he should deduct tds in 194q say both the seller's turnover and the buyer's turnover is more than uh, 10 crore in that case 194q stands so when the buyer should deduct tds and seller need not deduct TD, uh, tcs so every year uh, in the each business person has to check uh, which, uh, whichever party goes more than 50 lakhs what is the turnover of him we have to collect details for the same so 194q and 206aa if pan number is not provided then uh, five percentage uh, in, instead of the rates given in those section, uh, it will be rate uh, rate in force or uh, 20 percentage or rate specified, whichever is higher. So we, uh, if PAN number is not given, generally we used to direct TDS at a higher rate of 20 percentage. Suppose it is 194Q and the PAN number is not given, the maximum rate is only five percentage, not 20 percentage. So 194Q and TDS, uh, PAN number is not there, so 5 percentage, uh, it is not 20 percentage. Uh, similar adjustment because of 194Q in 206 AA, they have provided, uh, provided an uh, amendment stating 5 percentage is the maximum amount. Coming to 206 AB and 206 CCA. Similar to uh, this provision uh, uh, stating if you didn't give PAN number, we'll detect it at a higher rate. This provision states so 206 AB is for TDS and 206 CCA is for TCS, but same provision here. This provision says if a specified person, uh, if a specified person, who is a specified person? A person who has not filed his return of income for the last two years, both here he should not file the return of income, plus the TDS amount, TDS or TCS amount deducted in the last two years is more than 50,000. So both the conditions should be satisfied. One is, uh, the person who uh, should uh, he should not have filed written for two years, uh, preceding two years, and the TDS or TCS uh, to be TD, uh, TDS or TCS deducted in the last two years is more than fifty thousand. In that case, uh, we have to uh, deduct TDS or collect TCS at a higher rate. So now uh, we have uh, twice the rate or five percentage, whichever is higher. So rate provided in the section, uh, twice the rate provided in the section or 5%, whichever is higher, we have to detect uh, TCS or uh, TCS. Now the important problem here is, how will we identify who is a specified person? Like uh, when we have a lot of persons, uh, we, will, we may not know who have uh, filed written, who may not have filed written. For that, the government has come out uh, uh, with the, we can check uh, putting PAN number of a person, we can find out whether he has, uh, they have, uh, in if we go into the income tax portal under pending in uh, pending pending action tab we have an option for reporting portal when if we go to reporting portal there we can check compliance check tax, de tax detector and collector they have a, a tab specifically for it if we register there uh, just by uh, putting the pan over there we can find if he is a specified person or not so if he is a specified person, we have to detect at a higher rate of TDS or uh, we have to collect a higher rate of TCS. So this is the amendment relating to TDS and TCS. Next, coming to assessment. One big part is assessment only. So first one, uh, first one is 139.1, 194p. 139.1, what they have to, uh, what, what is the new amendment here is, Senior citizen resident in India with uh, above 75 years of age need, uh, with only pension income need not file return. But uh, in whichever bank they are receiving uh, pension income, in the same bank if they have if they receive any SB or FD interest, it is fine. Some other bank also they have uh, income from other sources, then this section will not be applicable. So. Uh, pension amount, interest amount should be from the same bank and this uh, senior citizen should give a declaration to that bank. 
In that case, the senior citizen need not uh, file the return of income. Similarly, this bank should deduct TDS uh, not normal pension. Uh, a bank should deduct TDS under 194P. Like the, they should calculate the total income of the senior citizen after uh, taking into consideration any uh, 87A relief or uh, Chapter 6A deduction. If at all any tax needs to be deducted, the bank should deduct under new section 194P. So this is one, uh, uh, 194P is a new section uh, specifically given for the, because of special, specifically given because of the senior citizen amendment. So 139.1 and 194P. Next coming to 153C. So what is 153C? If uh, during search, uh, any, uh, any books of accounts or documents or assets belonging to any other person, if the assess uh, assessing officer gets uh, any other document belonging to some other person, not the person uh, who, uh, for whom we are, uh, for whom the search is conducted, if any other person's uh, or documents there, uh, if the assessing officer get, he will hand over, hand over it to the assessing officer for whom the jurisdiction of that person is there. In that case, uh, after that jurisdictional uh, assessing officer, if he is satisfied, then he can proceed with uh, uh, for general search section, he can uh, give notice to file return of income for uh, either six years or 10 years and other procedures relating to the search 153A will be continued. Now, after 1421, this section will not apply. So, uh, assessing officer, uh, all basically all search uh, related sections will not applicable, uh, will not be applicable after 1421. They have uh, um, created a new procedure stating if it is a search, uh, if, uh, any search or seizure after 1421 will be deemed as uh, the assessing officer is having some information relating to income escaped assessment. And all search and seizure, uh, seizure proceedings will go as per the income related, uh, income escaping assessment 147 route. So no more specific provision for search and seizure. Yeah, so this section is also being, uh, the this section will also not be applied 153C which relates to books of accounts of some other person which we are getting in search. Next, 153A, this is for search. 153A is for search. So this will not be applicable from 30, uh, after 1421. Any search after 1421 will be based on the new procedure where it will be deemed as uh, income, escape. It, it will be deemed as some information which leads to income uh, escaping assessment and all the procedure of 147 to 149 will be followed. Next, 153. 153 relates to the uh, time limit for completion of scrutiny assessment 143 and uh, best, just, uh, best judgment assessment under 144. So they have reduced to the time limit by three months. Actually, as per uh, original provision was for 24 months. The a earlier time limit was for 24 months. Then uh, on 1418, they reduced it for 18 months. Then 1419, they reduced it for that is for assessment year 1920, they reduced it for 12 months. And for assessment year uh, one, from 1421, that is the, this is the new amendment, they have reduced it to nine months. So, maximum time limit for um, uh, scrutiny assessment and best judgment assessment order is uh, nine months only. But I think some uh, finance of 2022 also they have given some uh, I mean, uh, time limit uh, extending this time limit. In 2022, also some uh, amendment for the current year, AY 2021 alone, they have extended the time limit to 30th September. So the uh, time limit for is uh, they have reduced the time limit by three months, basically 153. Next, 151. 151 is uh, uh, sanction of notice, uh, issue of notice. So with whose permission they you, you can issue notice under section 148 and 148A. Basically, income escaping assessment with whose, uh, what is the level of authority who will be deciding whether this notice can be issued or not. So, uh, 151 states that if, uh, if, uh, if you are going to issue notice for less than three years, then uh, principal commissioner or commissioner can uh, will be the authority to decide, uh, will be the authority to sanction the notice. If it is more than for three years, then principal chief commissioner or the chief commissioner will will sanction the notice. So it is just a provision which gives authority uh, to whom uh, who will be uh, sanctioning the notice. So 151 over. Next, 134 and 130, 139.4 and 139.5. 139.4 and 
so belated return revised return for both belated return and revised return they have reduced the time limit by 3 months which means now uh, 31st december is the last date to file everything after 31st december we cannot file anything so 3 months uh, they have reduced the time limit for 3 months so based so third before 31st uh, so accordingly it can be filed on or before 31st march sorry 31st december or completion of assessment whichever is earlier next is 143 1 so 143 one, uh, one for intimation order while uh, processing this uh, if there is any adjustment relating uh, if there is any uh, in, in audit report if we are giving some um, income or expense whichever is not there they can automatically take it for in, uh, they can automatically give effect to it in 139 uh, sorry 140 143 1 no if uh, say uh, we have disallowed some uh, increase in expenses uh, increase in income or the, uh, any disallowance of expenses everything it will be automatically taken uh, while uh, uh, while uh, while we uh, while the 143 we, uh, one uh, or this is processed it will be automatically taken uh, similarly intimation under 143 one the time limit is also being reduced all time limits of assessments uh, the government has steadily reduced everything now for 1431 one intimation they are reducing it to 9 months from the end of the financial year so within 9 months from the end of the financial year uh, in which return is filed uh, intimation should be uh, in the time maximum time limit for intimation is only 9 months from the end of the financial year then for 1432 time limit for issue of notice under 1432 for that also they have reduced to 3 months from the end of the financial year in which uh, return is filed so for all these things they have reduced the time limit for 143 one intimation they have reduced to 9 months and 1432 uh, notice under 1432 they have reduced it to 3 months from the end of the financial year in which return is filed next one important se uh, section for um, income escaping assessment the procedure is a bit changed now a new section is introduced 148a so now the assessing officer before uh, now uh, before issuing notice under 148 they should conduct an inquiry and provide an opportunity to the uh, uh, provide an opportunity bef uh, to the assessee so how uh, they will issue a show cause notice first under 148a uh, and it should be the time given for the show cause notice can be between 7 7 to 30 days if there is any reply given and if the assessing officer is satisfied then no notice under 148 can be issued that is no income uh, just they are giving you an extra provision like first they will give a show cause notice if it is satisfied then there will be no income escaping assessment procedures uh, only if there is no reply for this 148a notice then they can go with one uh, 148 notice issued uh, uh, asking us to file the return for 3 uh, years or 6 six, uh, six years whatever it, and the Be, they will be proceeding with 147 one uh, for income escaping assessment procedures okay next miscellaneous adjustments uh, uh, sorry amendments so few small small amendments are that one is uh, they have come out with the dispute resolution committee so earlier only dispute resolution panel was only for mainly inter international taxation for a tp different transfer pricing this only for those it was there now uh, they have uh, bought a new dispute resolution committee uh, but uh, who all can go for this uh, dispute resolution committee is only those disputes whose returned returned income so first you should file the return uh, file your income tax return only those disputes where returned income is less than 50 lakhs and the amount of variation is 10 lakh or less will be eligible that is only for small level of people uh, this dispute resolution committee is formed no big procedure uh, it is not at implemented implemented they have started with this proposal so any dispute uh, where the returned income is 50 lakhs and the amount of variation is 10 lakhs can go uh, they can approach this uh, dispute resolution committee next settlement commission Uh, settlement commission was um, abolished uh, kind of abolished only so all provisions relating to settlement provision uh, cannot be applied now instead of that whatever is uh, on one what is that 
one to when this act comes whatever uh, application were pending uh, for before the settlement commission and not it passed order they formed an interim board and that board will be uh, will be taking whatever taking charge of the cases for the settlement commission which were pending so no new cases can go for settlement commission those cases for which application is pending they can proceed for settlement uh, they can go for this interim board but one disadvantage is that is also faceless only settlement commission is also faceless uh, faceless assessment next 234h so this is a new penalty or fine uh, section so aadhar and pan should be linked the, they have already uh, uh, extended the due date for lot many days now uh, now 31 3 2022 is the last date and uh, on payment of fee of 500 or 1000 you can link your aadhar and pan up to 31 3 23 if at all 31 up to uh, yeah, suppose government is not extend it more then your pan will be uh, if aadhar and uh, pan is not linked then the pan will become inoperative only when the aadhar is linked then only the pan can become operative so by inoperative what they mean is wherever uh, they are where in whichever provision uh, they are asking us to furnish pan number if the pan number is inoperative it means it is as good as saying uh, we didn't uh, no pan is given so pan, pan in, inoperative and uh, just means that no pan number is given for all the sections in this case so uh, after 31 3 if pan and aadhar is not linked the government can come out uh, then government can give you notices in for that a fee of 1000 rupees up to 1000 rupees can be levied under section 234h so uh, then 234f uh, we all know for late filing of written was that earlier it up to 31st december it was 5000 and um, from december to march it was 10000 then the past two years all returns were up to 313 uh, 31st march so uh, by now this 10000 class is removed so the maximum amount of penalty under 234f is 5000 only so if it if the total income is less than 5 lakhs then 1000 rupees 234f will be applicable this 10000 class of 234f is not there coming to 234c uh, dividends uh, similar to capital gains uh, dividend uh, for dividends this uh, two, uh, 234c uh, you will not know when dividend comes so advance tax cannot be paid prior to uh, prior based on uh, dividends so dividends uh, only after you uh, only after dividend is received for the quarter when we are paying advance tax we can go with uh, we can pay advance tax so for calculation of uh, advance tax uh, on uh, receipt basis dividends can be considered but 222e dividend that is deemed a dividend will not be considered here so for deemed dividend irrespective uh, of anything for whole year dividend as usual uh, for whole year uh, and uh, this uh, 15 percentage 45 percentage when we calculate 234c it will be can, uh, can considered uh, normally only those dividends other than 222e uh, we can go with this they have an exemption uh, on receipt basis after uh, after this if we uh, do that is enough then then uh, two more small provisions section 281b provisional attachment of property so so earlier only for proceedings and in assessment or income escaping assessment you can provisionally attach a property for maximum 6 months now uh, even for penalty under 271 aad and if the penalty is likely to be imposed is more than 2 pra 2 uh, crores then provisionally you can attach the assessing officer can provisionally attach the property now what is 271 aad so 27 271 aad deals with penalty for false entry or omission of entry uh, which is relevant for the total uh, computation of total income to evade taxes basically any wrong entry or omission of any entry in the books of accounts which results in reduction of taxes they can pro proceed with 271 aad penalty if the penalty is more than 2 crore then the property can uh, can be provisionally attached so uh, when we say uh, false entry it also includes uh, use of forged documents or bogus invoices everything so 271 aad penalty if it is impossible and it is more than 2 crores then uh, property can be provisionally attached in the interest of revenue under section 281b
next 255 so after, uh, after all the spaceless assessment proceedings now uh, penalty assessment and now income tax appellate tribunal will also go faceless uh, the procedure and everything is not and notified but uh, they have started so basic and uh, so it team will also go faceless soon so that's all major important amendments relating to 2023 is over few amendments relating to ifsc or which is which we are not regularly using i didn't take all those things uh, institutional investor or uh, you know, the companies in ifsc zone all those things i didn't take basic amendments which which we will be applying in our day to day life uh, this is the basic glimpse of it i hope it is useful for you guys thank you Thank you, Prabha. Actually, you covered everything. Uh, I don't have any points. Still, I can add few points to your uh, presentation. Uh, first, uh, uh, PGVP section 44AB. Actually, government wants to uh, increase non-cash digitalization, digitalization of money. For that, they have introduced a small proviso in the 44AB section. Uh, before assessment year uh, 2021, it was up to the 5 crores. Actually, the 44 every limit is if the turnover is more than 1 crore, you have to do compulsory audit. For the turnover limits from 1 to 5 crores, if you have done all the transactions through digital mode, you can you, you no need to uh, do the audit under system 44 AB. They have inserted a Provision in the 44 AB class A. The class A only relates to business. Take for example other profession. Can we apply this provision to our section? No, because we are covered under 44 AB class B. Earlier it was the limit was 1 crore to 5 crores. In the Budget 2021, they have increased the limit of 5 crores to 10 crores, which is applicable from the assessment year 21 22. The next point is uh, ESAPF employee contribution, uh, section 43B. Actually, uh, in the section 43B, in the 2005, they, there is an amendment, there is a clarification. If it is paid before filing the due date of uh, if it is paid before the due date of filing the return, it will be allowed under section 44, 43B. Actually, the 44, 43B deals with only the employer contribution. Section 36, 15A deals with employee contribution. And one more thing, the section 136, 15 read with uh, section 224, 2A, uh, 224. Uh, the, if, if, if you make, if you pay a delay, uh, even on sing, uh, one day delay, it will be uh, chargeable to income tax. Uh, it will be uh, added back to your income. Actually, uh, there are a lot of case laws, even in uh, our jurisdiction, uh, like Chennai High Court. As well as in uh, Supreme Court, in, in one of the Rajasthan privileges, this, the SLP has been uh, dismissed by the Supreme Court. And in our uh, Chennai, Chennai High Court, also the industrial securities and few more case losses are available in favor of the SSC, even though employee contribution is paid before the due date of filing the return of income, it will be allowed. Actually, uh, for the last three to four years, since uh, all the returns are processed centralized uh, in 143, one intimation, uh, almost all the SSCs in Tirupur, uh, almost uh, more than 70 to 80 percentage in the Tirupur will get the uh, first day will get a um, uh, 143 1A notice regarding. Uh, as per the audit report, your auditor has uh, mentioned this amount that you have uh, uh, employee contribution has been paid belatedly. Why it should not be added to your income? 
even though we filed a lot of uh, replies, they disallowed uh, the employee contribution. Then we got with the CIT appeals. Again, the CIT appeals also uh, disallowed the fact. In few uh, jurisdictions, it was allowed. In uh, Chennai, the uh, CIT himself, uh, appeal himself, allowed, allowed our argument. But in Coimbatore, as well as in the baseless CAT appeals, they disallowed. Still, we are fighting the issue in ITAT. In Chennai ITAT, it is favored in, in favor of the SSE. But uh, in the amendment, they they came uh, they, uh, in the amendment, they gave uh, actually uh, for late payment of employees' contribution, we are paying some interest and penalties as per the PU Act and the, as per the respective ESI Act. Again, the SSC is punished under both uh, respective acts as well as in the Income Tax Act. For that, uh, the government has given a clarificatory amendment that employee contribution will only applicable in the 36.15a and it will not be applicable in the 43b. Next, uh, 54 GB and 54, uh, 54 GB along with the section 80 IAC. Actually, 54 GB is the uh, reduction given for the long term capital gain arising out of residential house or plot. If you are invested the same in the subscription to a eligible starter company, that too, the eligible starter company have to invest the subscription amount within one year on the rate of uh, receipt of the subscription to purchase a new asset. This is for the uh, 54 GP uh, comes under capital gains and uh, they, uh, actually the date was, uh, the end date was uh, 31 3, 2021. They have extended it to further one more, one more year, it is 31 3 to 22. Consequently, the amendment also has been incorporated in the AT IAC. Then we will go to trust. Section 23, uh, 23 class, subclass 3 AD deals with education and 3 AE goes uh, deals with the hospital. Right? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, normally uh, sir, uh, one basic questions to young members. For the assessment year 20 to 23, how many budgets we have to see? For example, we are dealing with the assessment year 20 to 23. The main we have the main amendments will come in the uh, normally in the month of February. Earlier it was used to come in February end, March 1st week. Now they have fixed the date as February 1st. Every February 1st, there will be a budget. For the assessment at 20 to 23, how many budget amendments, uh, how many budget suites, uh, budget we have to see? Minimum two budget suites. Two. My view, okay. For example, if you take Finance Act 2020, they will give for few provisions, they will give some time limit. They will give one year extra. For example, it will be applicable from 1 4 2021 to from 1 1 4 2021. From that, we can assume that we have to see Finance Act 2020. And one more thing, the finance of 2021 is the base for assessment year 21-22. For example, 
in the budget the budget 2022 they they gave some amendments looked at that from 1 4 2021 retrospective amendment the minimum we have to see at least previous year current year and the next year budgets that too uh, the two the senior persons will know the retrospective amendments are uh, limitless yeah, from, uh, from the 1961, we can get the amendments. But uh, in the 1023C, and as well as in uh, some say, actually, uh, while introducing the some say, they have inserted the word sale. Sales. But they have not given the, and then we will find the, the section only will cover only the sales. Other than the sales, it will not be applicable. So, they, in order to rectify the error, they have removed the, uh, substituted the transfer instead of sale. Actually, the amendment came in one budget. To, in order to rectify the error or in order to cover everything, they have just substituted the single word. So that it will cover the wider the tax base. Whatever more. Ah, by, by, by whatever more. And same example, uh, in the 1023C, actually 1023C is up to one crore. It's, it's given for an institution or university. Same thing in case of uh, hospitals. In the amendment, they have added university or universities, hospital or hospitals, and they have increased the limit from 1 crore to aggregate of 5 crores. Earlier, the aggregate word is not available, only institution or uh, hospital. Slight amendment, they will uh, widen the tax base. And uh, section 11 as well as in section uh, 1023C. Purpose fund. Earlier we used to uh, reduce the amount, the voluntary contribution or uh, dividend received. First, we will uh, start our calculation with the total amount received less purpose 1101D. Then, balance we start applying our uh, 80 percent, 50 percent, something. Earlier we we are not all, we are not. Uh, uh, interested in whether the corpus is applied or now they have inserted a uh, section so that the corpus fund will also be considered only if it is investor or depositor as per the more specified in section 11 uh, subsection 5. Uh, then earlier it was not available in the section regarding loan are borrowings. Actually, if you, for example, education institution is buying a uh, buses for their uh, uh, transport of students. Normally, they will uh, buy, uh, mainly they will buy using the uh, borrowings from the tax. For that, uh, we have to consider only the margin portion as application, but uh, borrowings from the bank sh should not be taken in the year of purchase, but it, it can be taken at the time of repayment of loan, that they have been specifically mentioned. Then uh, excess obligation, excess obligation of previous years cannot be set up against current year obligation because specifically mentioned. And regarding TDS and DCS, uh, 194 Q 206, she covered everything. Uh, the government has, been, has came out a clarificatory with regard to 194Q, 194O, 206C, 1H. The 194O will prevail over 194Q and 194Q will prevail over 206C, 1H if for any reason the seller has collected the tax before the buyer deducts the tax under section 194Q. The buyer need not 
deduct the tax under section 194. It is available only in the circular. But uh, we have to move on whether uh, actually it is specifically excluded in the section itself, but uh, they have came out in the clarificatory nature. And one more thing, uh, do not six A B C C A. She uh, rightly said through the reporting portal we can check whether the specific person is a and the concerned person is will come under specified or not. For example, uh, the practical difficulty is the company having uh, very big company having maybe they uh, they are dealing with the uh, hundreds or thousands of parties. It, is it not possible? For the company or the SSE to go and uh, check with the uh, collect the IDR of the IDR and uh, we have to check that they have filed the IDR and the aggregate of PTs or PCs is more than 50,000 or more. For that, the government has came out the reporting portal. In that reporting portal, we have to just feed the PAN number. The portal will give the whether that person is a specific person or not. The one more thing, amendment on, on uh, actually it was introduced in the Finance Act 2021. Again, they amended the section in the 2022. Earlier it was two years. Now they removed the two only one year. For the current finance year, if the person is not filing the return for single year for one assessment year, it, he will become a specific person. 